I'm back with a beard. That's okay, though, because I want you to live long and prosper with Azure Security Center. Hey guys, and welcome to the show. Today I have Yuri Diogenes with me. How'd I do that? Did I do that okay, Yuri? Yeah, you did great. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So what's your title? I'm a senior content developer at the CSI Enterprise Mobility uh, and Security team. I'm responsible for the Azure Security Center content as well as the OMS security and solutions around enterprise mobility. Uh, that uh, have a security uh, baked in. Because as you know, recently we changed the enterprise mobility, used to be enterprise mobility suite, and now is enterprise mobility and security. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. I think a lot of people, when they think about Azure, think security is kind of automatically built in, but there are some things that people can do to make themselves more secure, correct? That's correct, that's correct. There are a lot of capabilities, and we also recently, uh, we launched a new website uh, called Azure Security, Informa uh, Azure Security Information Site. I'm going to give the URL later. Uh, but this is a place where you go a one-stop shop for all security content related to Azure, um, which is something that we didn't have in the past. Now we are concentrating everything on this site. Awesome. So I think one thing that, that you, you know, you kind of have... Matt, let me back up just a second. I think that there are two trains of thoughts, right? You've got people mm -hmm. that think, um, well, the cloud's incredibly secure. Look at all the certifications that Microsoft has on the cloud. Um, you know, all the all the FedRAMP stuff, all the government certifications. The cloud's, the cloud's very secure. But the other train of thought, and I think the correct train of thought, is that there's always things that you can do to make things more secure. And and depending on the level of cloud support that you get, especially if you're doing Azure, there's infrastructure as a service, there's platforms as a service, there's all sorts of levels with Azure. And, and in a lot of those instances, you're actually um, kind of the person that's responsible for security um, uh, in those uh, in those cases, correct? Right, right. That's correct. And... Um, What's happening, uh, the shift today that we have is that although security remains the bigger obstacle for overcoming this fully migration to the cloud uh, because of uh, privacy concerns and things like that, this is changing as we show our commitment to keep uh, customers' privacy and also enable customers to leverage our own cloud resources to protect their assets. And that's where things like Azure Security Center, OMS Security play a big role. Not only that, but also a lot of uh, uh, capabilities that are built in in Azure that customers can leverage to protect their resources. So this is, this is something that is helping to build trust and also making uh, way more flexible for uh, IT to say, hey, I, I believe and I trust this, this cloud provider, I trust their platform, they have mechanisms to protect my assets. So it's about building that trust by showing results, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So what happens when there's a security incident in the cloud? That's uh, 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 that's the whole point of this conversation today because incident response is something that companies are starting to finally, right, uh, bake into their uh, processes, uh, internal processes. The thing is, some companies are more mature uh, in incident response on premises, but when they go to the cloud, they will, they are a little bit uh, not sure what to do. For many, many years, companies, they, they focus on protection, right? Across endpoints for sensor, data center. It was about building a perimeter with firewall and all that. They realized that protecting and only defending is not really work correctly. They will get on at some time. They will uh, be attacked and it's important to have a detection mechanism that can rapidly identify possible attacks, possible vulnerabilities, and how to prevent or how to overcome something that was already exploited. 
So we are shifting from protection to detection. Uh, and this is an important shift because as we detect uh, vulnerabilities rapidly, we can take action to respond ra rapidly. Now, to respond, we need to have tools for that. And that's where uh, Azure Security Center and OMS play a bigger role because we can identify, we can not only detect that something did happen, but we can also give guidelines on how to remediate. So these yeah. are two powerful things. So there is a, a big shift on this cycle. It used to be protect, detection, respond. I mean, this cycle is still on. We, this is the secure posture of a company, but now the emphasis is in detection and response. Yeah. So how can Azure Security Center, you know, be utilized for incident response? So at uh, Microsoft, we recently uh, released a paper called Incident, Incident Response in the Cloud. I'm also going to share this uh, URL with you guys. The life cycle is basically composed by detection, assessment, diagnose, stabilization, and close of uh, the incident. And Azure Security Center will play a, a really big role in three stages. On the de detection stage, which is the stage one, where we identify suspicious activity uh, by leveraging our threat intelligence capabilities that we have. And we identify that something uh, happened, some malicious or a suspicious activity, something is happening, the customer should take care of it. Then we go to stage two, which is the assessment. Uh, according to the incident response lifecycle. So in the assessment stage, we need to obtain more details about uh, this incident in order to move on during the investigation and understand having more tangible data to investigate. And uh, Azure Security Center also provides uh, some capabilities for customers to you know, continue the investigation process. And the, the next stage, stage three of the incident response lifecycle is the diagnosis, so where we can examine uh, the data that was collected to gain more uh, technical details about what took place, so which machines were compromised, what type of compromise, what type of malware, what, you know, getting all the details so we can correlate. Because as this is a detection mechanism, we need sometimes to use this information that we are going to obtain on, in Azure Security Center or OMS, and then cross-reference with uh, firewall logs and other logs so we can have the entire uh, uh, rationale about what took place and, and we can build this timeline. Yeah. Cool. So I understand you have some demos for us. That's, that's correct. I would like to start with the Azure Security Center demo. All right, so the uh, Azure Security Center dashboard is inside the Azure portal. You can browse here through Security Center, and you're going to go exactly to this dashboard. This dashboard is divided in, in two major sections, the prevention section and the detection section, which is in the bottom here. Uh, now, for incident response perspective, uh, you're probably going to start uh, with the detection because here, as you can see, there is a nice timeline of things that are taking place uh, per date. And also, it uh, a list of prioritization saying which one of those alerts are high, medium, or low. Of course, if you are trying to investigate something, you're going to start with a high priority. It's like a crit sit, right? You need to start with the high priority uh, type of incident. So when you click on this style, it will expand, open a new blade called Secure Alerts. And on this new blade, you're going to have more description about the alerts. Each alert will show up here, and for example, if I go to this malicious SQL activity, notice that it says Microsoft. And the reason why it says Microsoft is because uh, these alerts can be triggered by Microsoft Engine itself, a part of the Azure Secure Center, or it can be from a vendor. Let's say that you purchase a web application filter or web application firewall through uh, partner solution marketplace in Azure Marketplace, right? You can install this on top of uh, your Azure Secure Center, and from now on, you will also receive alerts from this partner. Now, Microsoft is not is not as 
provide the mechanism, the platform, and the partner is the one that will identify and provide you more details about the, the alert. Let's use this Microsoft here as an example. We have this uh, SQL malicious activity here. When I click, it opens another blade. And here it tells me about the attacked resource. In this case, it's SQL DB1. It happened one time, and this is the detection time. And when I click on that, it opens another blade with a full description of uh, the, the problem. And here on top, I have a description that says machine logs indicates that this FTP.exe was executed by MS SQL Server account. This activity is considered malicious. So that's uh, an indication that something happened. Now, this could be a false positive according to customer. Well, it, it could if, if it was done on purpose, right? Let's say I have my DBA that for some reason he is starting FTP with the SQL account. Uh, he shouldn't do that in the first place, but if he did, this will uh, raise this alert. And, and this is part of this in initial detection. Uh, if we go back to the life cycle, um, I have a suspicious activity, I have a detection time, this is a high priority, it's still active, which means I didn't address this. Uh, it tells me which resource was attacked, in this case the SQL DB1. Uh, it tells me the username, the process name, uh, the command line that was executed uh, during this activity, and the nice thing also, it tells me about some remediation steps. Now, it's important to emphasize that these remediation steps, they are guidelines that can help you to address this issue. It does not mean that after you execute those steps, you are clear. It means that you have these guidelines to isolate the problem and move on from there. Maybe once you finish execute step number five, you find out that there are other machines compromised or something. So it is only... Uh, some uh, suggestions that you should follow uh, to other this problem. Yeah. So that's a, a, a very powerful uh, information because if you think about when I'm when I'm uh, in a cloud environment uh, with Azure, my VMs are sitting in there, and probably I do not know if something did happen or not. So it's important for me to have. Uh, a tool like that that can uh, emphasize a problem. Another very powerful alert that we do have is is what we call the crash dump analysis. The crash dump analysis. So let's say that nowadays you are working in your uh, uh, machine and you get a user mode dump, right? Uh, the process just quit or the process crash and generates a dump file. How many times do you actually do a post-mortem analysis on a, a user mode dump? It's rarely, right? Because you're like, well, that was a process that just crashed, no big deal. If it was a, a, a kernel dump that will crash the entire machine and you got a blue screen, then you'll be concerned about what, what happened, why, why this uh, took place. But for user mode, you, you sometimes ignore. Now, for machines that are being monitored by Azure Secure Center, what's going to happen is we have the capability to analyze that dump file and give you results in case we find something suspicious. So this is a good example here, the modify system binary in a dump file. The VM, this VM, VM number three, uh, was at, uh, the resource that was attacked. And in this particular case, uh, we have the alert saying, hey, Azure Secure Center detected an Im image mismatch uh, on a module loading in memory during the analysis of a crash dump. It tells me which dump file was analyzed. It tells me the process name, the, probably the process that it did crash. And it tells me uh, some remediation steps. <clears throat> this is also a very powerful type of alert because, again, as I said, it is uh, possible to identify if a malicious piece of code uh, was injected in, in, in your process or if there is something in that part of the memory that was compromised by a piece of malware. And sometimes it could be even a zero day, right, because we don't have signature of, and we don't look in this particular feature, we, we not necessarily look for signature, we look for patterns and techniques. So that's very powerful yeah. as well. 
Yeah, cool stuff. So all these things that we have on the secure alerts are uh, alerts that will be triggered and you should address according to the severity. As you can see here, we have uh, ranked by high, medium, and low. You know, we have a, a FDP brute force attack uh, that was identified in, in one machine. And then we have the explanation about the source machine, about the attack duration. Here, during 30 minutes, someone was trying to brute force my machine via RDP. So that's also very powerful. I understand that this is taking place in my environment. And if you don't have, as you said, you sent to monitor your uh, VMs, you really don't have this information. And you go to that uh, mode that you don't know what you don't know. And you think you are safe, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. What about OMS? All right. So let's uh, go to OMS security. So if we go to to the main operations managed suite uh, dashboard, you have to click on security and audit. And this is where we open the OMS security um, dashboard. And this dashboard is pretty rich. There are a lot of things going on here. So you really need to focus on what you want to uh, work. Let's say you have you are doing an investigation as part of your incident response. Now you, you obtain some information regarding uh, uh, some activity that took place and you want to go and investigate further. You want to, uh, for example, verify if there are a specific process running across all your VMs. So you could go here in the detections uh, tile and you can you could search uh, use this uh, search capability here uh, to search for uh, a specific event. Okay, um, this search is built in. You could uh, type event ID and then type uh, event ID uh, the the one that you want to see. Um, in this case here. The event ID is the 4688, which is a new process has been created, uh, which is a good indication that a new process was created at some point in time in, this, in these machines. So I can see across all machines that, were, that are being monitored by OMS, which uh, process uh, were launched at some point in time, which is also very powerful because now I can query and, and you can see that it was pretty fast, the result. And I can identify a potential piece of uh, malware. For example, nowadays they use a lot of Mimikatz uh, to obtain information. So I could look for Mimikatz.exe across all uh, machines. Let's use uh, one example here. Uh, let's say the sec edit. I can filter, when I click on the process, I can filter by that process. So I have event ID 4688, process equals to secedit.txe. So I can create queries to identify um, these commands. And from that, I can create, just by click on the alert, I can create a new alert rule and say, hey, every time that this process is launched across all machines that are being monitored, you should send an email to me. Right, you should send an email notification to me about that, uh, and I can, and you can control exactly uh, the frequency, the time window, and all that. So it's very powerful, very flexible uh, capability. Now, one of the things that people usually ask is, okay, so we have Azure Security Center, we have uh, OMS Security. Uh, when should I use uh, one or another? Right, and and, and right now. Azure Security Center is focused on machine, virtual machines and resources that are in Azure. So if you have a pure Azure environment that you want to monitor, then Azure Security Center will be your main uh, uh, service to, uh, pre uh, prevent, to detect and to respond to security incidents. Now, if you have a hybrid environment and you are monitoring resources that are in the, in the cloud and on-premise, and when I say in the cloud, it could be Azure or AWS. It doesn't really matter. But if you have a hybrid environment, then OMS will be uh, your best solution to monitor across different locations in this hybrid environment. 
The other capability that we also have here, in uh, very so, powerful in Azure, in OMS, is the threat intelligence. So uh, the tools that we have nowadays, they usually monitor what? Incoming traffic, right? We are trying to block something to get in. But what about if I have a, a, a VM or a physical machine that is being compromised and is being used by a botnet or something? Uh, most of the traffic will be outgoing traffic from that virtual machine to somewhere else. And here uh, we have this threat intelligence that can tell me geographically to where that uh, machine that I do have is sending traffic into. So that's in this really case, cool. that, yeah. that's really, yeah, that's really powerful. That's really yeah. cool. I agree. Uh, so for example, if I uh, look to this botnet, well, I have this machine that is being used by a botnet and the remote IP country is Belize. So it tells me uh, the geographical area where this information is located so I can take uh, actions. For example, this one here uh, is a host member of botnet Pony Loader. So this is such a powerful information for customers because many times the machine is working properly, nothing is wrong. I mean, there is no alerts in my IDS or my IPS, nothing is going wrong. But this machine has been silently leveraged by cyber criminals, and I right. want to know about that. Right. And, and it may, like you said, it, it may seem like the machine's just operating normally. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This is very cool because it allows you to look at things that maybe you wouldn't think of off the top of your head. Exactly. And not only from the incident response perspective, but also normal operations, because if you have your normal OPSEC uh, going on every day, you can see those alerts and say, hey, I, I, this machine is not supposed to be talking with these guys, so what's going on here? So you can start investigating and you start to understand how your environment is being used by uh, external players. Yeah. Also, I, I imagine that if it's a lot of data, it could end up costing you money anyway because people pay for WAN links and LAN links. And so you, you certainly don't want that traffic to begin with because it's, it's you know, it's malware. But, right. but you also don't want to have to pay for somebody to run malware on your machine. Right. <laughs> so uh, the, the combination of these two uh, products and, and, and how uh, customers can leverage them for their incident response is very powerful. I think um, that we, we, we launched uh, Azure Security Center GA a couple weeks ago, and OMS Security will be officially GA today, uh, August the 3rd. And uh, customer can start using this right away. Yeah, that's really cool. Is it something that a customer has to subscribe to? There are some, uh, if they have Azure uh, subscription, they can start using Azure Secure Center right away. There are some, uh, most of the, the capabilities are free, and some other services, they, they are paid. Okay. Right? But yeah. they can use right away. Okay, good to know. Hey, Yuri, um, first of all, thank you for all that. That's, that's good stuff. Um, if thank I'm you. a customer and I want to find out more about this stuff. Is there like a website or is there some documentation somewhere that I can go and, and take Absolutely. a look at? Absolutely, yes. Um, we, we put together uh, an Azure Secure Center Planning Operations Guide, which should be, which should be really the first step for uh, IT pros and the security professionals that are planning to adopt Azure Secure Center. Um, here, uh, the we have the entire rationale on how to use or uh, the secure roles because you also want to leverage uh, different roles to manage your services. So you can use our back capabilities that we have in Azure and we give some suggestions about that. We talk about secure policies and recommendations. So the planning guide is pretty extensive and the, the last section of the planning guide is actually about uh, the incident response uh, life cycle that I was talking about, the detection, assessment, diagnosis, stabilizing, close. So we, we explain in which stage Azure Secure Center will be leveraged and you can leverage that. And it has a link also to the uh, Azure uh, Secure Center detection capabilities. The main uh, link uh, for that is 
azure.microsoft.com documentation services security center right there is where we land and we have videos we have entire uh, uh, left navigation with uh, lots of information about azure security center same thing for oms oms is also under azure.com documentation suites operations management suite and if you go to the left navigation we have security and compliance and in there we have get started where we explain the entire OMS security solution, the dashboard and everything. We talk about uh, monitoring secure domains, threat intelligence. So we have a good amount of information for customers to get started, get going and uh, use the product. Awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and great documentation as well. Um, a lot of links on those websites. Uh, customers can spend a long time going through that stuff. Yes. All right. Well, listen, um, thank you again for being on the show. I certainly appreciate it. Um, I like your shirt. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Blue Hat. <laughs> Microsoft yeah, that was from Blue Hat last year, Microsoft Blue Hat last year. Yeah, they're looking forward to go again this year in November. That's awesome. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, and that's your Taste of Premiere.